David Brainerd knew he could not accomplish what God had put in his heart to do. And so he took the gospel, you see there on the screen, to Native Americans at great sacrifice. What was the sacrifice? Ultimately, it was his own life. But he saw an incredible outpouring of the Spirit of God. Now, I'm going to just read to you a portion of a prayer that he tells about he prayed. Now, you can read about David Brainerd in this book, America's Revival Heritage. And you know, I was amazed. Sue and I were in Toronto, Canada, and we were visiting a friend there named Ann Can. And Ann invited a, a brother named Levi, who is a Native American. In Canada, they call them First Nations people. And uh, Levi Beardsley, he is a leader there. And uh, she wanted to invite him with us. And I gave him a copy. I had, well, she had given him a copy of this book. And he was so blessed by the story in this book of David Brainerd that he had, uh, had, had shared it with other people, with other First Nations people, because he was so inspired by the story of David Brainerd to pray and believe God for another great awakening among his people. And, uh, you know, I, I said to him, you know, you're welcome to more books. Now, you may not care about this book because it's about the history of America. And, of course, you're in Canada. He said, oh, no. He said, I want to share that story of David Brainerd with my people to inspire them to pray and to believe God for another great awakening in our midst. And so this book is available from my website bookstore. It's also available on Amazon in both uh, paperback and Kindle. So you can get a copy of this. And, and this uh, account that you're reading is directly from this book. And David Brainerd, he kept a journal. He was very diligent in keeping a daily journal of all that was happening. And very honest, he, he tells about his struggles. He tells about times of depression but he also tells about the times when God breaks through with times of refreshing. And so he says in this, he says, I set apart this day for fasting and prayer to God for grace. Now, I, I want to define grace as David Brainerd understood it. He understood it more in the biblical sense. I set apart this day for fasting and prayer to God for grace especially to prepare me for the work of the ministry, to give me divine aid and direction. So he was praying, he know, I, God, I know I don't deserve this, but God, in your grace, give me the empowering presence and the direction that I need to fulfill your plan and purpose. David Brainerd saw God's grace as God empowering him and giving him what he needed to fulfill God's will and purpose in his life. And then he goes on and he says, he set aside the day, so he's spending the whole day without eating, there in the wilderness, not eating purposely, so that he can give himself completely to prayer. And he says, in the forenoon I felt the intercession for precious immortal souls. What's he talking about? I believe he's talking about he's, he's experiencing the Spirit of God beginning to intercede in him and through him. I felt the intercession for precious immortal souls. God enabled me to so agonize in prayer that I was quite wet with sweat though in the shade. And he goes on and he said, My soul was drawn out very much for the world. And it was like in this time of prayer when the Spirit of God came upon him, his, his prayers extended out beyond his, his circle, his circle of ministry. And he began to pray. His prayers expen, extended to the entire world and for God's kingdom to extend to all the world. Who knows, he may have been praying for us. He says, my soul was drawn out very much for the world. I grasped for multitudes of souls. 
Oh, this kind of intercessory prayer, this kind of prayer where we yield ourselves to the Spirit of God and we allow the Spirit of God to pray and to intercede through us is vital for seeing God's plans and purposes fulfilled. And I'm talking to people today, you've experienced that kind of prayer. Let me encourage you to yield yourself and let God pray and intercede through you in that manner and continue to pray until you feel that burden, that sense of heaviness and burden lifted and you feel a lightness in your soul. Continue to press through and pray. And as David Brainerd prayed, it didn't happen all of a sudden. I think it was a couple of years after he wrote this in his journal that he was preaching among the Delaware in New Jersey at a place called Cross Weeks on New Jersey. And he began to see the answer to his prayers in such an incredible and remarkable way. And on August the 8th, 1745, he wrote in his journal, The power of God seemed to descend upon the assembly like a raging mighty wind. It seemed to descend. It wasn't something that he, like a cheerleader, had worked up and got people worked up into a frenzy. No, he didn't even minister that way. And he was so handicapped in being able to communicate. But all of a sudden, he said it was like something descended from heaven. Oh, remember Acts 2, there came a sound from heaven. Remember Acts 3.19, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And all of a sudden, David Brainerd says, the power of God seemed to descend upon the assembly like a raging mighty wind and with an astonishing energy bore down all before it. He says, I stood amazed at the influence which seized the audience. In other words, he just stood by observing and he was amazed. And all over the house, people began weeping and people outdoors began to weep. And people, he, he talks about that they couldn't move. Some tried to go, but they couldn't move. And he saw people whose hearts before were resistant and stubborn. He saw their hearts broken and melted and began to weep. He says, a principal man among the Indians was now brought under solemn concern for his soul and wept bitterly. And he goes on and he ends this by saying, uh, I thought this had a near resemblance to the day of God's power mentioned in Joshua 10, 14. For I must say I never saw any day like it. In all respects, it was a day wherein I am persuaded the Lord did much to destroy the kingdom of darkness among this people. Oh, my friends, and it is that kind of commitment, that kind of intercessory prayer that will destroy the kingdoms of darkness in our midst today and will bring another great spiritual awakening. David Brainerd continued to minister even though he began to cough up blood. He had days where he would have to just stay in bed all day, but as soon as he, he could move, he would go back out among these Native Americans who, whom he came to love greatly and they loved him. In fact, they began to build their wigwams and their huts around him. So there was a community that grew up around the little building that he had built for his own habitation. But he finally succumbed to tuberculosis. It's obvious you read his journal, he didn't look after himself he extended himself beyond what his body could handle. And so he was taken into the home of Jonathan Edwards, the famous revivalist preacher that you've heard us talk about. And, uh, and, uh, and Edwards, and particularly his daughter, uh, nursed him in the final days of his life. And Jonathan Edwards tells about in his own journal how th that even in his dying days that Jonathan Edwards' life was filled with prayer 
And he tells about how he had such hopes and expectations for great awakenings of God's Spirit in the days ahead and in the future and after he was gone. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And uh, thinking of Fern, Sue was just talking about our, our friend Fern who is ministering with First Nations peoples in Canada. And yes, we're believing God for great awakenings there. And uh, so uh, John, uh, David Brainerd died in the home of Jonathan Edwards. And then Jonathan Edwards took his journal that he had been keeping for, for years and he published David Brainerd's journal and it became such a blessing to so many in that generation when they read his devotion, his commitment to God and his devotion to God. The journal wound up in England. John Wesley got a hold of a copy and he read it and he was so moved and he told his Methodist associates, preachers, He said every Methodist preacher should read the journal of David Brainerd because Wesley wanted to see that same kind of devotion and commitment among his people. And oh, we need that kind of devotion and commitment in our churches today. Oh, how we need to move beyond just an entertainment feel-good format and how we need to offer our hearts up to God and allow the Spirit of God to pray and intercede through us today to break the powers of darkness over the people, over the nations, over the peoples of the world, that the powers of darkness will be broken and God's kingdom will come in power and set the people free. My friends, it can happen again, but it takes people who are devoted and committed to God and to His presence and to His purposes and to His kingdom. So may God raise up David, more David Brainerds in our midst today that the powers of darkness will be broken and God's kingdom will come in our midst with great power and people's lives will be set free.